Some friends gave me a publication called The Ancient Music of Ireland, and I had read that they played with fingernails and they played the instrument on the left shoulder. I approached the harp that I was to buy and played one string. The sound rang out and rang out. I'm Ann Heyman, and I'm from Winthrop, Minnesota. This is a Gaelic harp. Its image is on the back of every Irish coin and on Irish passports and on postman's buttons. It's the image that Guinness used, but now they've really modernized it. Eklund Kane was an Irishman playing harp in Scotland, and he's the one who first used the term Gaelic harp. There was a time when it wasn't really accepted into the church because it was considered pagan. We know that this instrument was used to play in churches and private chapels of the big homes by 800. To better understand it, I paid attention to Irish mythology. It turns out the legend of the first harp is a woman detested her husband and she was running all over Ireland and he was chasing after her. There was the carcass of a beached whale in the northern part of Ireland at the Strand. The wind blew through its bones or sinews and the sound of it put her to sleep. The husband saw this and he thought, oh, if I could please my wife like that, and made the very first Clarshuck from parts of the whale. The profile of its skull structure looks like the harp lying on its back. So the eye would be here, and this would be the jaw down here, and this would be the bow, and this is where the mouth would open. Then baleen, it's like horsehair fringe off of them, and that's what strains the creel from the ocean. There's the zoomorphic figure on the four pillar, and I believe that to be a two-headed eel representing the migration of eels because they were magical. There were three types of music that the instrument was known to be played for. Goltry, Gauntry, and Suntry. And that's crying music, laughing music, and sleeping music. This harp was made for me by David Cortier in Duluth, Minnesota. It's in the form of the medieval Irish harp that first appears in iconography circa 1000. It has the harmonic curve in the neck, and this is a feature of instruments that are strung in metal. At the same time period in 1000, the instruments that were strung in gut or horsehair had straight necks and it has a bowed four pillar, a robust construction, and you can even see the metal cheek bands. And this means there's a lot of tension on my frame, which means I'm not a little tiny lap harp, but I have significant size and bass pitches, which put more tension on the frame. Now it is known that the harpers played with the harp on the left shoulder. And that's different from the way other harps are played. Most harps are played on the right shoulder here, and this affords the right hand to be playing the high strings and the left hand the bass, so it's orientated more like piano. Now, this is known as the downhill harp. This harp is strung entirely in brass. This is a water serpent, otherwise known as eel. And Loch Ney in the northern part of Ireland is known for having horsehead eels, like Scotland's Loch Nessie, but without as much hoopla. This would be a Gothic harp. These instruments are known to have quite a sound. They have bray pins. The pin holds the string in.
This is a copy of a harp known as the Bunworth harp. And it was made in 1734 for the Reverend Charles Bunworth by John Kelly. This is one piece willow sound box. And it's a high headed harp. It's the only Irish harp that resides outside of Ireland or Scotland. It's in Boston at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Edward Bunting thought the right hand being strongest played the major melody notes in the sonorous range of the instrument and the treble hand provides the symphonal parts. The bass hand plays on the beat and so it's um da 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 Harp is percussion before it is a stringed instrument. You strike the strings. Think of how different the music would be if piano was designed with the extreme bass in the right and the extreme treble to the left. How would the music have developed differently? When the music starts to speak to me, I can't deny it anymore. I'm trying to bring the voice of the instrument to life. Funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.